all right so it's been a while since i uploaded a video and that's because i wasn't well but now that i've recovered and i finally got some time to play around with the radio transmitter and i decided to use a 2s lipo battery to power up the radio transmitter and to also power up the transmitter module so basically i have soldered a dean's connector to the positive and the negative terminal of the battery bay so if i decide to use AA batteries when i don't want to use the external module i can still do that and then to power up the r9m which has express lrs on it i've used a standard servo cable and i've soldered that to the motherboard of the radio transmitter the black wire is the ground the red is the power and i've soldered that to the vpad pad on the motherboard and the white wire is the signal which is soldered to the tx2 pad and to extend the wire to the module i'm using this extension wire so if i plug this on the front side of the module i can power up the module and use it and the diagram for that is here as well so we have a oh, negative positive and smart port or the signal wire so firstly make sure you have the latest version of OpenTX on your FlySky i6x radio transmitter the latest version that's available as of now is version 1.2 and with that the express lrs menu is now a lot faster when it comes to loading up the transmitter module compared to the previous version of OpenTX. so first as always in the model setup oh, i'll make sure that external rf is on and i've set that to crossfire and then i'll go to the radio setup so I'll hold the bind button and the very first page we have the express LRS option so click on OK to enter the menu and it says loading that's because I haven't connected the signal wire to the transmitter module yet so let me do that and keep an eye on the screen so that you can see how fast the module is detected and the settings are uh, loaded up see that so that's how fast the express lrs menu loads up with the version 1.2 so the first is the packet rate and this is basically the refresh rate and we can set this oh, anywhere from 50 to 200 hertz for a 900 megahertz transmitter module and if you have a 2.4 gigahertz module then you can select up to 500 hertz so if you select a higher packet rate the latency will be low but the range will also be a bit lower whereas if you select a lower refresh rate like 25 hertz then you will get more range but the latency will be somewhat noticeable the next we have the telemetry ratio so if you want to use telemetry then you will have to enable it from here in the previous version you had to check the telemetry option while flashing the firmware on the module and the receiver but with express lrs 2.0 we can access the telemetry from the settings in the radio transmitter itself so if you don't intend to use telemetry you can set this to off so a ratio of 1 to 2 will uh, update the telemetry at a very high rate whereas if we select let's say 1 to 128 the telemetry will be updated at a much slower rate so depending on which you find is comfortable you can mess around with the telemetry ratio that you'd like to use and access the telemetry data on your radio transmitter and keep in mind that the telemetry ratio is dependent on the packet rate so if you change the packet rate the telemetry ratio will also be affected the next we have the switch mode the default used to be hybrid and you also had the option to select wide which you had to select while flashing express lrs in the configurator but now we can change that in the radio transmitter itself and we will take a look at this in the configurator 
So we can see how hybrid and wide affects the ports and the aux channels. The next we have model match and I'm not sure if this actually works on the Flysky i6X because if I'm not wrong there has to be a receiver number in the external RF settings and since we don't have the receiver option in the external module settings I don't think we can use the model match feature and what this will do is it will prevent the transmitter module from communicating with the receiver if the model is not correct so that way you don't accidentally fly a different model which has uh, different settings on it so that's what the model match feature is for but I'm not sure if it works on this radio transmitter because like I said we don't have the receiver number in the external RF settings and because I only have one Express LRS setup I cannot test it and this is something that I'm not 100% sure then next we have the transmitter power so we can change this from 10 to 250 milliwatts 100 milliwatts 50 milliwatts 25 and back to 10 milliwatts and just below that we have the dynamic feature and this is something that's new in the express lrs 2.0 settings so if i want i can assign an aux channel so that if i flick a particular aux channel then the dynamic feature will either be enabled or disabled so you can use anywhere from aux 9 to aux 12 or if you want you can set this to on and if i select 250 as the max power then depending on how close or far the quad is the power output for the module will change and we will see the rssi value fluctuate as well and we also have the option to uh, enable the fan threshold so if your transmitter module has a built-in fan or if you have the r9m with the fan mod then you can enable the fan threshold at a particular power level so if i set the module to 250 milliwatts and if i had the fan mod on my module then the fan would start to work once the power reaches the threshold value that we set over here and this is especially useful if you are using the dynamic feature because in that case when you're flying the quad and your drone is moving uh, further away from you the power would automatically increase and in that case the fan will turn on automatically the next we have is the vtx administrator and this is a new feature with express lrs and it's basically like smart audio but we can adjust the vtx settings from the radio transmitter so let's try to change the settings and see how it affects the video feed and by the way to use this feature i think you have to set up the vtx table in beta flight and this could be useful if you are not able to see the video feed and you want to increase the power level or change the band from the radio transmitter uh, itself so if i click on send vtx the settings will be sent to the video transmitter and we should see the video feed disappear so let's set this back to default and So it's an alternative uh, to the smart audio that we access from the OSD. You can also make changes to your VTX from the Express LRS Lua script or the settings menu. And then we have Wi-Fi connectivity. So if your module and receiver uh, support Wi-Fi, then you can update the firmware on the module and the receiver. And you can connect this to your home Wi-Fi and uh, make all the changes. And then last we have the bind feature so if you haven't set up a binding phrase on the module and the receiver then you can bind the module and the receiver from the radio transmitter and i would recommend that you use the binding phrase because it's much more reliable and convenient and if you have a binding phrase already on the module and the receiver and if you accidentally select the bind then 
then sometimes you would lose the connection and you'll have to power cycle the entire setup. So you'll have to power up your cord again and restart the radio and the module in order to establish the connection uh, once more. And that's about it. That's all I had to share in this video. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And once again, a huge thanks to Mr. Mariano and Janik for implementing the OpenTX firmware and ExpressLRS on the FlySky i6X radio transmitter. Without them, we wouldn't be able to use all these extra features on a budget radio like this. And if you still haven't flashed OpenTX firmware on your FlySky FSI6X, then now is the time you should and access the full potential of the radio transmitter. Thank you.